Hello everyone, my name is Dallas Johnson and I'm the lead instructor of the Automobile Dealer Training Association and I'm going to be giving you your pre-licensed training so you will qualify to receive your California dealer's license. And uh, first of all, I want to go over some things that we're going to do here. I want you to be aware that you must stay on the computer the entire six hours of the webinar. The software we use will show me if you're not at your computer the entire time. And I'll be sending you some questions through the chat box and if for some reason you stop responding, we may need to reschedule you for another date. So uh, first thing I want you to do is click on that little chat button at the very bottom of your screen so you can see the chat box. And so why don't you go ahead and do that right now, click on the chat button at the bottom of the screen. If you have questions during the webinar, just enter your questions into the chat box and I'll do my very best to answer your questions during the webinar. If for some reason I do not have an answer for you, I will do some research after the webinar and contact you afterwards in an attempt to answer all of your questions. And at the end of the webinar, I will look at our webinar record to make sure you were logged on the entire time and then we're gonna mail you your official DMV certificate of completion and you'll need to submit that certificate with your dealer application paperwork and that will show the DMV that you completed your entire six hours of training, so you will be able to apply for your dealer's license. But next, I wanna go over the webinar schedule with you here, and we allotted 15 minutes before the course for you to get logged on, and we always start the courses at exactly eight o'clock a.m. We're gonna cover quite a bit of material, then we'll take a 15 minute break at 9.15, then we'll restart promptly at 9.30, we'll continue till about 10.45, take a 15 minute break, Restart at 11, then we'll take a quick 30 minute lunch break from 12 o'clock to 12.30, at which time we'll resume the training and go through the home stretch. And I'm gonna do my very best to have you done and off your computer at exactly 2 p.m. And I want you to be aware, I will ask each of you when you're back after the breaks, and if you don't respond, you may need to start the course over on a different day. So make sure and respond to those chat questions and make sure that you're back at your computer promptly after every break and uh, this will ensure that you did not you know go out and mow your lawn or something like that but I also want you to be aware this training consists of five units in unit one we're going to cover all the steps that are necessary to become a licensed motor vehicle dealer in the state of California then we're going to complete all the paperwork that is necessary to apply for your license and we do have quite a few documents to complete and we'll go over all those documents with you here uh, in just a little bit in unit two we're gonna go over the importance of ethics in your new business. I will talk about license suspensions. You certainly do not wanna have your license suspended. And we'll talk about specific reasons that could get your license suspended. Uh, you must notify the DMV when you make any changes to your dealer's license. We're gonna talk about financial responsibility, which is insurance on your vehicles. We're also gonna cover titles and registrations, document preparation fees, and then we're gonna delve into sales tax. And in unit three of your dealer training course, we're gonna cover the very important car buyer's bill of rights. Uh, we will talk about records that you're gonna maintain in your new business. I'm gonna show you the very easy to use report of sale and temporary license plate system, the electronic lien and title program. I'll also let you know how to legally use your dealer license plates. And the DMV does have strict guidelines to follow on how to use your dealer license plates correctly. And we will go over also smog inspections, and odometers as well. In unit four of your course, we're gonna cover advertising. You will advertise differently when you become a licensed motor vehicle dealer. We're gonna cover financing. Most of your customers will need help getting a loan for the vehicle you're selling, and if you assist your customers in obtaining a loan, you will need to follow some important financing guidelines. And we'll cover California's workers' compensation law, prohibited employment act practices, the very important National Motor Vehicle Title Information System reports that you're gonna run on all vehicles you purchase and sell. The Office of Foreign Asset Control. I wanna show you how to report cash to the IRS, and I hope this is a big problem for you, uh, how to report cash that you receive. So we'll cover that here in a little while. In the final unit of the course, we're gonna delve into California's Vehicle Code Division 12. We'll cover several Federal Trade Commission rules. Uh, I'm gonna go over the posters that must be displayed in every California business, including the notice to public posters, a uh, posting which you will need in your dealership. And finally, we're gonna cover dealer auctions. And I know many of you are obtaining your California dealer license with the sole intent to access dealer auctions in order to purchase vehicles uh, that you will sell on your lot. 
Uh, but before we get started, I hope you have downloaded that PowerPoint manual that I've emailed you before, before the course. And we have a lot of great phone numbers, email addresses, website addresses, and other great contact information that will, you will see on the screen during the course. And you will easily be able to access all that information in your dealer training webinar after the webinar is complete. So before we get started, I want to give you some really valuable contact information for the California Department of Motor Vehicles. And for the rest of the course, I'm gonna to refer to them as the DMV. And the DMV has oversight over occupational licensing, and that's the division that regulates motor vehicle dealer licenses. So the staff of the Occupational Licensing Unit are an encyclopedia of dealer knowledge, and their full-time job is to help us maintain our compliance. And here you see their contact information. That's Department of Motor Vehicles, Occupational Licensing Unit, PO Box 932342 in Sacramento, uh, zip codes 94232 as well. If you have any questions about dealer licenses, you can call 916-229-3126. If you have questions about salesperson's licenses, which we'll cover a little bit later, you can call 916-229-3128. But first, I want to explain the difference, the different types of motor vehicle licenses that many of us are, are obtaining. Many of us are going to get the retail license, which allows you to sell retail on your lot to your customers, but it will also allow you to sell wholesale to other de dealers, say, for example, at dealer auctions. A wholesale license is a little bit different. A wholesale license allows you to sell vehicles to other licensed motor vehicles dealers only. You cannot sell vehicles to anyone that does not have a dealer's license when you're only a wholesale license. You can only sell to other dealers. And then we have what's known as an auto broker endorsement, which retail dealers can obtain when they want to basically act as an intermediary between a buyer and a seller. So in other words, you would be brokering transactions, but you must have a retail dealer license in order to obtain an auto broker endorsement. And I want to repeat that very important statement. You must have a retail dealer license in order to obtain an auto broker endorsement. So in unit one of your dealer training course, we're going to cover the steps that you need to complete before you apply for your license. And then we're going to complete several documents that you'll be required to submit with your dealer license application. So we do have a lot of paperwork that we're going to cover here uh, momentarily. But let's go ahead and get started with the steps that you must complete in order to obtain your dealer's license. And I want you to know you must complete all of these steps and then apply for your dealer's license. You can't skip any steps. You've got to complete every step and then you apply for your license. And we'll cover your startup steps, including how to complete the dealer application forms here in just a little bit. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And also, I'm going to talk to you about your live scan fingerprinting, your business building and lot requirements, the sign you must post on your building, the photographs you're going to be submitting with your dealer application. So we're going to have a lot of photographs to submit, and I'll cover all those photographs here in just a moment because the DMV basically wants to know what your operations look like. We're going to talk about records. I'm going to show you what a, a dealer surety bond is and where you can obtain a dealer surety bond. You're going to need to apply for a resale permit in order to obtain a dealer's license. And I will show you how to do that in a few moments as well. You will more than likely be registering your dealership business, either with the California Secretary of State's office or your county. And I'll show you those methods as well. You're going to need to have a local business license, which may be called a tax certificate, depending on where your dealership is located. You must have a federal tax ID number in order to have a California dealer's license. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your tax ID number, it's free. It just takes a few moments, a few clicks of the mouse, and I'll show you that in a little bit. You must complete the entire six hours of training that we're doing here today, okay? And you will be done with your training at about two o'clock today. And you're gonna take a real easy dealer exam at your DMV office. We've got a study guide for you here. I'm gonna show you how quick and easy that is. And then you're gonna have a quick and easily lot inspection, which I'll cover here in just a little bit. But um, in order to obtain your dealer's license, you're going to need to complete several forms that you see here on the screen. And there are a lot of forms that must be completed. And we're going to complete each of these forms together at the end of this unit. All those forms must be completed in their entirety and correctly. That way your dealer's ap application will sail through the occup occupational licensing unit in Sacramento and you'll be able to get your dealer's license back as soon as possible. So we will cover all of these forms here uh, in just a little bit. I also want you to know that you can download all the forms that we use in your dealer training course at the CaliforniaDealer.com website. And that's the 
websites that you signed up for the course on. Just go to CaliforniaDealer.com, scroll down where you see the California Dealer Forms link, then click on that link, and then here you're going to see a list of the forms that you can easily download and complete in order to apply for your dealer's license. And as I stated a moment ago, we'll be completing all these forms together here in just a few moments to ensure you are completing them correctly. I also want you to be aware that we posted several training videos on the website for you to easily review after you complete your webinar today. So just go to California Dealer and click at the top dealer videos link there you see at the very top of the page and we're going to be posting more and more training videos on the website. So be sure to check back later days to view new dealer license training content that is designed uh, just for you. So I hope that's very advantageous for you after the course. Every person that wants to have their name on a California dealer's license must pass a live scan fingerprinting. So here very soon, you're gonna have oversight over some very large financial transactions. And many of the vehicles you sell will be worth several thousands of dollars. So before the DMV gives you a dealer's license with complete oversight over these large financial transactions, they wanna make sure that you did not just get out of prison for robbing a bank. You know, they want to make sure that you've never stolen a car or rolled back odometers. The DMV requires us dealers to be of a higher level of ethical standards than the average person walking down the street. And they want to make sure they're not giving a dealer's license to someone that was, you know, managing some auto theft ring. So, so you and each person whose name appears on the license will need to obtain what is known as a live scan fingerprinting. When you have your fingerprints taken, the tech must forward an electronic copy to the Department of Justice. And if you live in another state but are opening a dealership in California, you will need to obtain a fingerprint card and get your fingerprints taken in your home state. But if you live in California, you can go to oag.ca.gov or, you know, you can just go to your favorite search engine, type in the words California Life Scan. And here you see a direct link to find Life Scan locations near you. Next, you know, you would just scroll down, select on your county, and then you're going to see a list of live scan locations near you. And as you can see here, the hours of, of the locations are posted along with what services they provide, their prices, and their contact information. So you can schedule an appointment for your live scan. Be sure and tell that technician taking your fingerprints to copy the results to the Department of Justice so you can obtain a dealer's license. If you have any questions about live scan, you can call Occupational Licensing at 916-229-3126, or you can email LiveScan support. That's LiveScan, LiveScan support at doj.ca.gov. Once again, that email address is LiveScan support at doj.ca.gov. Next, in order to obtain a California dealer's license, you must have a, build, a business building, and there are a few requirements that you need to be aware of. First, your building must be permanent in nature and the building must be zoned to operate a dealership. So how do you find out if the building you wanna use is zoned for the operation of a dealership? Well, normally you can call your city hall and you can probably ask for planning and zoning. Tell them the address of the building that you wanna use and they will inform you whether or not you can have a dealership at that building. But we must meet local zoning requirements for the building. You also must have an office with direct entry and the building must be separate from any other business and be for the exclusive use of your dealership. In your office, you're going to need a desk, a chair, filing cabinet, and a phone. And, you know, the office is where you're going to store your records. And we are going to be starting a great big paper trail when you have a dealer's license. And we'll delve into your records requirements here in just a little bit. But state law also requires that you post your hours of operation on your building the DMV wants to make sure your customers know when you're accessible, whether they have questions about a vehicle they want to purchase, or maybe they've got some questions about a vehicle they have already purchased from you. So we need to be accessible to our customers, and so we're going to need to post those hours on the front of the building. Also, you're going to have to have a display area. Most, most uh, dealers are required to have a display area. Re retail dealers are required to have a display area for the vehicles they are selling and must have sufficient space for the vehicles that they are licensed to sell. So, you know, if you're only selling motorcycles, you would need enough space to display motorcycles. If you're selling motor vehicles, you're going to need enough space to display motor vehicles. Uh, and your lot, just like your building, must meet all local zoning requirements. The lot must be for the exclusive use of your dealership. Uh, the DMV does allow an additional display area as long as it's within a 1,000 foot radius from your main building or any branch location 
without requiring a separate license. However, any separate display area must meet the signage requirements as well, and you'll need that two by foot, two by two foot sign uh, for that display area, which we'll talk about your signage in here in just a moment. Sales activity must only take place at your license location, and I want to spend a few moments on that requirement. Right now, I'm assuming that you do not have a dealer's license, so you can put a for sale sign on your car and, and stick it, you know, out in front of Walmart, you know, until the Walmart manager runs you off or whatever, but once you become a licensed motor vehicle dealer, that law changes and you will then only be able to have retail sales activity at your licensed location. So let's say, for example, you have a customer that contacts you about a vehicle you have for sale online. And let's say the customer may ask you to bring the vehicle to their location to show it. This is known as off-site sales activity, or sometimes we refer, we refer to it as curbing your vehicle for sale at a non-licensed location. The DMV strictly prohibits off-site sales activity. You will need to explain to some of your customers that state law prohibits dealers from engaging in off-site sales activity to retail customers, and they will have to visit your lot for any sales activity. So now you can sell your vehicles wholesale at any dealer auction, but when you're selling a vehicle to a retail customer, and that's a person without a license, that sale must take place on your lot. No, no offsite retail sales activity is ever allowed. And on a final note, a display area is not required for wholesale dealers. So do please keep that in mind. 